Hi, Jill. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're really welcome. It's great to have you on. I know during COVID you had a bit of a cameo um, on one of the pods we did from Kiwana up at the Queensland States, a little bit of an anecdote about your racing on the day. Indeed. Yeah, I felt like a boiled frog getting back into a racing suit and <laughs> swimming with that kind of pressure on me again. It was like, in terms of the fabric of the suit, it was like, how did we do this? It was <gasps> nuts. <laughs> oh, I know. Putting on those race suits and especially in Queensland where it's so humid. Oh, yeah. Chandler is, um, or the Sleeman Sports Complex, whatever it's called these days. Uh, that is the worst. Yeah. Swim meets in the change rooms in January there. Yep. Yeah do not recommend. No, 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 no absolutely no. not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had a huge 12 months, broken two Masters World Records in mixed relays in the 4x1 and the 4x2, and just recently a world record, individual world record in Finns swimming. So congratulations yes. on a fantastic 12 months. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a, um, a different, different kind of year for me, I suppose. I'm a bit more, um, yeah, under the radar, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, been fun to, um, yeah, try something um, new and different in fin swimming. Um, it's been a great community to be a part of and experience a World Masters Fin Swimming Championships over in um, Egypt and uh, and then to be part of a brilliant team um, with uh, my PowerPoints crew and uh, and the minds of Lockie and Tomo who I think first crunched some numbers on the spreadsheet and went hey we could give this uh, give this a bit of a shake so yeah yeah it's been fun. <laughs> well I do want to talk all about fin swimming but let's dive into the master swimming first and I know you just mentioned Tomo and Lockie so who were the four people in your mixed relay because you had the same uh, four for both. Yes yes we did so uh, there was the legendary Jenny Bucknell who needs no introduction whatsoever um, and then Mark Thompson, Tomo um, and Lachlan McDowell, uh, Lockie. So um yeah tomo's been has a, a long history with um swimming in australia um, as a coach of elite swimmers as well as uh, his own personal performances in the pool um Lockie grew up in um queensland and actually swam with uh, the commercial club here in brisbane for a number of years and has always been a um a talent as well as being a um super smart um oncologist um so yeah it was a great team to be a part of and i i guess i felt lucky to be you know the kind of the fourth swimmer when there were probably plenty of other options who could who could come on in and do a a, a good job or, or a better job for me so yeah lucky to be lucky to be along for the ride <laughs> oh no i'm sure that you were a very worthy part of that relay oh no i was a, i was a, it was touch and go for the uh the four by 100 relay i was a bit nervous about that because i'd had a um a liver resection about a uh, three and a half weeks before maybe yeah so i was wow. back in the water for just over two quietly shitting bricks whether i could you know, <laughs> pull out a number that was going to be uh get us under that threshold but um yeah i don't know we'll call it a hospital taper and uh yeah but, but got there so so that was good a big relief a big relief yeah well it worked well because you um you blitzed the record which is amazing and really exciting i was there on that day to, to see that and that was that was a great one yeah it was it was great it was um actually really sort of emotional i suppose in a you know it, it was just a i mean Mel, coming back to melbourne for me is like returning home so um it was great to have you know friendly faces in the in the crowd and people cheering you on and uh, all that sort of thing to help with the nerves and then the um, celebrations at the pub afterwards which yeah. is, uh, which is <laughs> always great. good so, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> uh, so take us back to the beginning of your master's journey what what drew you into master swimming to start with oh good question um i had moved uh i had been living in the us and canada for a few years um, in the early to mid 2000s um, and I threw myself into work um, and wasn't I was probably the most unfit and unhealthy I'd ever been in in my life and so when I moved back to Sydney I just thought look I'm going to come back and do things that make me happy get a bit more perspective um, on life and so I joined um, the North Sydney Masters Swimming Club um, 
I can't remember exactly what year. It was probably 2006, I think, uh, because I think two years later there was the World Master Swimming Championships in Perth. So right. I was still very much a, a newbie. I was like, all these people are going to Perth. So, okay, let's go to Perth and go to a swim meet. And then then you just yeah see people of all ages, you know, absolutely blitzing in the pool. So, um, so yeah, I think it was getting involved in that community. Um, at first I thought, oh, this is great. I can do, you know, some pool swimming, but do lots of ocean swims and that'll be lovely. And I did an ocean swim or two and it, um, I am terrible at it and I don't know how to navigate and I get really impatient and, uh, yeah, so not my bag, um, but fell back in love with pool swimming and then, yeah, had my stroke ripped apart and put back together and, um, and then just started seeing little bits of incremental progress and um, and just, yeah, had a lot of fun. So have kept kept doing it. Yeah. Well, what do you find the most fulfilling about it? Oh, it's, um, it's two things. So one is the community side, um, the friendships that um, I've made through the sport um, and the, and the things that we as swimmers and people experience together, um, you know, you, you can bear your soul in between sets um, at, you know, 6.13 a.m. Uh, when life's really hard and then you've got someone there to, you know, to lend a shoulder or give you a hug or, or for you to be able to do the same thing to someone else who's in, in need. I think, you know, the swimming community, um, the people in it are pretty special individuals. And so, yeah, being a, being a part of that community and giving back to it and, um, and receiving a lot of love from it is, is fantastic. And then I guess there's the, the, the sort of that notion of, um, you know, when you apply yourself and, um, and set goals, chip away at, at, at working on, you know, technique or executing skills or whatever it might be, um, that satisfaction that you get from, yeah, achieving, achieving goals that you might um, set for yourself and then, and then go on to think, well, what's next? And, you know, can I dream bigger and be a little bit better and all, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, they're, they're the, real, the real drivers, but also, you know, how good is it to get up every morning and, and dive, in, dive in the pool? Yes, yeah. Pretty special, yeah. Absolutely. And do you, you will, I, I always feel this way because I train early in the morning in Melbourne and it's cold, it's freezing at the moment, it's obviously. Even yeah, it's even harder. And I'm quite sort of, when I get out and I'm driving home, I'm quite smug to myself thinking, you know, mm. half the world's still asleep. And Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you go to your bougie little bakeries and go, oh, yes, I I can have that sausage roll. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I will get my uh, double decaf latte from <laughs> wherever. Absolutely. Yeah. And that and that cronut. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, it is. It, it does give you a good sense of um, yeah, satisfaction and feeling like you've you've put in some hard yards, which we yes. all have. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and we're not yeah. smug at all. It was just <laughs> not at all. No, but just extra brownie points for getting up in Florida That's or right. Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I first moved to Melbourne and I, I got up on a Saturday morning, it was three degrees, you know, bucketing down with rain. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> It was, um, it's a, it's, we've got it a bit more cushy here in Brisbane, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you mentioned that you were in Melbourne and, and that's how I knew of you and met you down yeah. here and you were yeah. in Sydney as well, but now you're yes. in Queensland. Where do you train? Yes. Where do you base yourself for ah, your training? Yes. There? So at the Valley Pool um, here. And so when I first moved to Brisbane, um, my coach, who's still my coach, Michael Brumley, um, he was uh, coaching uh, with Commercial Swimming Club, um, pretty iconic uh, swimming club from um, particularly with yeah, swimmers, the likes of, um, oh gosh, Libby, Libby Trickett, you know, um, Liesl Jones, so many to, to name. Um, and uh, yeah, it, so he was, he was coaching here um, I sort of knocked on the door and I went, hey, look, I know I'm an old fart, but can you <laughs> can you make an exception? Um, promise I won't get in the way. And if you want to kick an old lady out, they just, you know, just tell me I'm not good enough and I'll, I'll go away. Um, so, yeah, Michael made some allowances for me to, uh, yeah, train with the sort of state and, and national squads when I first joined. And, um, 
Yeah, and so Michael's sort of been, he's he's moved from commercial to, um, you know, an, another club um, and I still coached under him and he's um, been back at the Valley for a um, number of years now as coach and also a manager of the Valley Pool. Um, so I'll split off here and there and, you know, jump into some other squads, um, you know, infrequently, but yeah, um, Michael's been sort of the, um, yeah, basically got me to where I have been over the last sort of seven years or so. Um, yeah, so that's been, that's been great. He's, um, he's put up with me and I've learned a few things from him. So. <laughs> <laughs> and when you said you start, you ripped your stroke apart and started again, was he the mastermind yeah. behind your new stroke? No, that was actually after, um, that was while I was still in Sydney and um, I must admit, this is terrible, I can't remember the name of the coach who uh, who did that work. Um, I was swimming mainly with Steve Badger um, at North Sydney at the time and he had an assistant coach who was there for maybe a year or so and yeah, I feel awful, but he, I think he moved on to one of the um, either the, you know, the bigger schools or whatnot. But, um, yeah, I learnt with the old exaggerated S stroke. Um, and of course that doesn't really get you through the water. So I think it was after the world, um, the world masters in Perth, um, where I was kind of coming near my times when I was a teenager. Um, but I thought oh, I can probably do a little bit better and then, yeah, um, and then the coach, and then Steve actually said, "Go work with whatever his name was. Um, he's really good at um, pulling strokes, you know, ripping them apart and putting them back together." Um, so he did that, and um, yeah, I was able to go a little bit faster from understanding how the sport of swimming and all of its technicalities had evolved yeah. in in the you know twenty five odd years or twenty odd years that I'd been back in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think people realise how technical it is because a lot mm. of people can get in and swim, but to yes. increase your speed and go faster, there's mm. so many parts of that, moving parts that can yeah. be worked on to help yeah. you go faster. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it was in Melbourne that I um, learnt how to do breaststroke um, for a short period of time and for a very short distance. And only when there's a wall in the middle of the pool. So, and then, um, but then Michael has really helped me with um, with my butterfly, yeah, here in in Brisbane. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And what does your training week look like? Like, how many times do you train? And do you do dry land as well? Share with us what that looks like. Yeah, sure. Um, so, generally speaking, I'm in the water six mornings a week. So Sunday is a complete blob slob rest day. Um, and then I'll do um, two sort of strength and conditioning sessions and then maybe one or two Pilates um, classes. Um, and as I've got older and as I've spent a bit more time in the hospital, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, I've come to learn, you know, maybe I am a, no, not maybe, I am a slow learner. Um, the less is more theory in terms of, um, you know, the volume and distance and so forth. Um, I think before, before Guangzhou in 2009, I was doing seven sessions a week. So doubling up on a Monday. So Monday would be a 10 kilometer day, generally speaking. Thursday, or Tuesday and Friday mornings would be 2K and the rest of the sessions would be somewhere between three, four or four or five K. Um, but yeah, sessions at the moment could be anywhere from, you know, 2K to 4K and um, focusing more on the intensity and quality of work rather than just slogging myself up and down a pool so yeah and then the strength and conditioning gym work um these days has always got some element of rehabilitation associated with it um or prehabilitation and um <laughs> yeah uh, and then pilates is generally just a bit of bit of fun but um i feel that that's going to be tapering off a little bit as well yeah it's yeah. only so many hours in a hours in a day or a week so it's hard to fit it all in, especially with, you know, a busy work life, which I know you've got outside of the pool as well. What what are you um, working in or what's your sort of career now? Uh, career is I work for um, a business and we focus on um, learning and development and leadership development. So we have a team of facilitators who basically, you know, help people 
um, not be evil in the workplace and um, <laughs> and then I work on sort of the business management and client relationship side of things. So yeah, full time job that has its peaks and valleys, but yeah, can be yeah. can be intense at times. Yeah, yeah, like, I bet pretty much like anyone. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And and back to the workouts. What what does a typical training session look like to you? So you, you said between two mm. and four k. Mm, Take through yeah. sort of the warm up, the main set. What do you, what do you do? What do we do? Um, I love a long warm up. Warm up. So on longer sessions, um, you know, there's usually like one point two k of sort of warming up stuff with fins. So that might be, you know, six hundred, um, you know, six hundred um, uh, alternating free back, free kick. Um, then there'd be a component of drill work. So it might be, you know, 350s drill and then 150, um, uh, 25 metres at maybe, you know, 80%, you know, repeat that a few times and then um, descend the distance but increase the intensity of that 50 where you're, you're, you're sort of um, just doing more short sprinty stuff. Um, and then there might be... Um, uh, some work where we would do some um, stroke count and um, and time. Um, so descending 50s, um, like this morning, for example, was um, three rounds of um, of descending 50s, um, descend stroke count and time um, with 100 recovery, 150 recovery and 200 recovery um, after each 50. Um, and then we would get into the main set, um, which I skipped out of this morning because I'd already done two kilometers by the time it was <laughs> to get there and I'd done gym beforehand and I needed to get to work so well um, yeah fair enough <laughs> so I, I missed out on um three uh what was it four rounds of 325 at uh, 335 meter max efforts um with a 50 recovery and then a 50 max um and then 100 easy so that was such a shame to miss out on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how much of that would you do butterfly? Because I know butterfly is your form stroke. Can you swim oh, butterfly? Yeah. Friends, um, um, it's a good question. I have not actually done a lot of butterfly since um, maybe April, May last year when we had our nationals and state um, because my right shoulder um, uh, basically fell apart and um yeah, and then after I had, um, I had a couple of cortisone injections after my surgery in April. So it's it had been funky for about a year, and I backed off the butterfly quite a bit. Um, so before I went to Egypt, I think um, I did my first full butterfly set, um, you know, of the of the year in sometime around like early May or something like that. I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're yeah, building building back up there. Um, building back up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but you certainly leading into Guangzhou. Um, Friday Friday was always fly, yeah, sprint fly sets. Um, and then typically I would always have done like a yeah maybe some fly on a Tuesday Tuesday morning as well. So you know probably two sessions out of the out of the week would be a dedicated fly fly day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what was the injury in the shoulder? Was it bursitis or was it more serious than that? Um, no, nothing more serious. Yeah, just a yeah. Bur niggly bursa and then mm. um, niggly joint. Um, yeah. God, for all the amount of um, uh, swimming I've done and, um, and hospital time, my articulation of basic anatomy is not very good. So, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah the front bit of the shoulder was a bit dodgy <laughs> and the back of the shoulder was also clapped out. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, did you find the cortisone injections helped? Oh, it did. Yeah, did? it really yeah. did. I was I was surprised because my sports doctor went, um, my physio's name is Chris, and he went, cortisone is not the cure. Chris is the cure. Um, so, well, if cortisone wasn't the cure, then it was certainly miraculous. So, yeah, I was uh, very happy with that. But, um, yeah, I still had to do all the all the things that you need to be doing post, yeah, post zone to make sure that it's its efficacy is optimized so yeah yes. no cutting corners kids no cutting corners no so. exactly yeah. work on that yeah. pre work on that That's prehab right. prehab 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 <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't do a dot of it when i was an age group swimmer not at all 
Oh no. And I've been terrible as well as an adult. Um, you know, I'm one of the most inflexible people I know. And yet, you know, I'd sort of rip myself out of bed and jump straight in the pool without any time for mobilization or anything, which, you know, now I'm attempting to pay a bit more attention to. So yes. Oops. (laughs) We live and learn. We do, we do, you know, <laughs> we may be old, but not wise, but we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> and what events have you got on the horizon coming up for your master swimming? Um, I will do there's a, a meet at the Valley Pool um, towards the end of August. It's a um, Brisbane Northside Masters um, short course meet. Um, love the meet. It's a great atmosphere. Um, we always seem to you know, luck ourselves into a beautiful sunny day in the middle of winter. Um, so yeah, that's, that's great. That should be a bit of fun. Um, don't yet know event, what events I'll, I'll do, but I'll have a, a look soon and figure it out. Um, and then there will be, um, I'll go to Adelaide in October for the Australian masters games, um, which I'm really looking forward to because there will be, I think there's two days of swimming and then the, um, the day immediately after the swimming program finishes there is a one day in swimming meet so i'm very keen to get the flippers back on and uh and jump in and uh and compete in spin swimming again yeah well that's great that you've mentioned it because it leads us straight into talking about that what is fin swimming and how did you discover it yeah okay so fin swimming is awesome it is like um having a chassis of a Morris minor car and you stick a Ferrari engine in it. It's, <laughs> it's so much fun. I love it. Um, I mean, you know, full disclosure, I'm a, I'm a swimmer who loves um, fins at any point in a, in a, in a, in a session or a program, um, bring them on. Um, and I came up, I came upon it, um, it was in it was promoted by a, a meet was promoted by master swimming queensland in january 2020 so just before yeah you know, the dreaded COVID hit um which was being held at the university of queensland pool and it was the national championships for the australian fin swimming um association and after um worlds in guangzhou i'd had a, a long-term um elbow um or injury to both of my elbows i'd had neuropathy and and um tendonitis in in both elbows um so i'd had um prp in october of 2019 on both elbows and that took a while to kind of get functionality and strength back um so i thought oh here's something here's a meat i can compete in and stick a pair of fins on and I just imagined that I'd have my hands by my sides and a snorkel out the front and kicking away happily. Um, so I thought, brilliant, sign, sign me up. So um, um, I signed up and then the day before the meet, I met um, a lovely woman by the name of Helen Lane, who's the um, president and sort of head coach of fin swimming. Um, fin swimming as a movement seems to have its sort of origins and headquarters, if you like. Um, in Tasmania. So a lot of Tasmanians came up to um, to Brisbane and um, I met Helen the day before to, to pick up this, the particular snorkel that you need to wear, um, which is more of a metal snorkel with, a, with a, a firmly fixed bracket because you dive in wearing a snorkel. Right. Um, and turn wearing a snorkel. Um, so your typical plastic training ones sort of flop everywhere and not, not really functional. Um, so she went, here's your snorkel. Um, and then I went, well, so how does this work? Like, do you just stick your arms out the front, out by your sides or I went, oh, no, 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 no. There's, um, there's kind of two schools in terms of fin swimming. There's, um, mono fin. Um, so wearing the big kind of honking great, big mermaid 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 tail, basically. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And those things are phenomenal. I've never really had a, a, a play with one, but yeah their their weight and the yeah the effort that people go to to put their feet in and all this sort of thing it's it's like a whole (laughs) ritual unto itself um uh so there's the mono fins and so yeah that's where you do have your hands out front in streamlined position um 
uh, just kind of merrily, you know, undulating your way through the water. Um, and then there's the bifins category, um, so wearing two flippers. Um, and in bifins, my understanding is you can either do a surface stroke, um, which is, again, you know, um, swimming on the surface of the water in that streamlined position, as you would with monofins, just undul undulating your way through, um, or you can use your arms in a freestyle motion. Um, so that is what I opted for and um, yeah, gave, gave it a go and it was heaps of fun. And of course, who doesn't love seeing, oh yeah, 58 for 100 freestyle wearing a pair of flippers. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> and then um, there were um, national championships in Tasmania in 2001. Um, 2000, 2001, I think. No, no, I don't think so. No, no, I think nothing was on maybe that year. And then, so national championships maybe then in 2022 in Tasmania, which I couldn't get to because I lived in Queensland and we were still locked out. Or was that 21? I can't remember. It's all a blur now, the whole COVID period. Um, uh, but then nationals were held on the Gold Coast in 20, February 2023. So that was the second time I participated in fin swimming and um, yeah, got selected to be um, to be part of the, the the Australian team at the Masters yeah championships in Egypt. So, wow. um, yeah, it's it's a it's a really interesting intricate sport um, in terms of you know the apparatus that you can use. There's a whole range of different fins that are you know um, approved, um, and your different range of swimsuits that you could you can use and so forth. Um, but certainly in Australia at a national level, and as will be the case at, at um, the Australian Masters Games, um, they're pretty low key and informal. So the one piece of apparatus that you need is that metal snorkel, which costs about 40 bucks or something. Um, and otherwise you can stump up in whatever fins, whatever racing suit or, or training suit that you want. Um, I think the you know the the philosophy is really to get people involved in the sport you know let people have a good time and um yeah and and enjoy themselves and ideally see the sport grow and flourish yeah wow it's it's um i until i saw that you were over in egypt doing that i had never really heard much about it so it's yeah. really something that i think a lot of swimmers would enjoy i mean there's a lot of us out there me included who love using fins yes yes we we love fins we um, love fins. absolutely yeah and it's interesting mm. because the sport is governed by the um um uh cmas um is the is the association um, i'm not going to put on my terrible french accent and pretend to articulate what it means in uh, or what is in french um, but it's the federation that that um, governs all underwater sports so sports like underwater hockey um, underwater rugby um, yeah so it's it's governed by um, by cmas and um, uh, and then the Australian Federation yeah, is here in Australia. So, yeah, just anyone who's curious, just look up um, Fin Swimming Australia um, or Oz, Ozfin and, um, and you'll, you'll quickly get to the, um, the right resources. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a heap of fun. Um, yeah. Certainly in going to Egypt, um, meeting a whole heap of people from around the world, um, it was interesting to... Um, yeah, understand how people came to be involved in, in swimming. It's not necessarily a, um, you know, the primary sport or the first sport that people have been involved in. They can do deep sea diving, they do free diving or, or water polo or underwater hockey. And so, yeah, it's a real melting pot of different people. And um, yeah, it was just awesome to, to learn more about it and be yeah. involved in the community, yeah. And so your world record was in the biofin, biofin, or is it biofin? Biofin. Uh, bi, biofins. Biofins. Yep. Yeah. Bi and fins, so, yeah, yeah, in the um, uh, 50, 100, 200, 400 freestyle. Right. So yeah, it was um, a successful meet in that, yes. in that regard. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. so you just swam that as you dived off the blocks, normal mm. freestyle, but with fins. So you were kick, using yep. a freestyle, freestyle kick. Freestyle kick, kick, yep, and, and, and you're wearing a snorkel, yeah. Right. So, um, 
and yeah, you, you would think, and there's slight differences to the rules. So there's no track start permitted. It needs to be a parallel. Your feet need to be parallel. Um, uh, and it was a mixed meet. So in addition to my results in the bifins, I got disqualified in the <laughs> 50 meter apnea, which is the, um, you dive in, you don't wear a snorkel, um, you execute it in full streamlined position, um, doing dolphin kick underwater and um, it's a no breath um, 50 so if you come up for air at any point you're disqualified um, but I um, wiggled on the blocks at the start so I oh no <laughs> that's right we live and learn we live and learn um, yeah so um, but yeah bifins basically yeah freestyle with flippers and and the, and the snorkel um, right. and it sounds easy but there was certainly a parts in the 200 and the 400 where um, I was you know, I was certainly feeling some oxygen deprivation. Um, you know, your legs are working hard, your core's working hard. Um, and being a complete newbie to the sport, like I don't yet understand the, you know, the, the science or the physiology of, um, you know, technique around taking breaths or kicking patterns in a 400 or a, you know anything anything along those lines so yeah i've got i've got a lot to learn that's for yeah. sure well it's great that you're sort of speaking out about it and advertising it because i think a lot of people could be quite interested in having a go yeah yeah i think it'd be great you know come to adelaide mm. give it a go and um certainly um what i have found i mean in terms of my age group in masters swimming you know i'm 47 turning 48 next year and so there are always, you know, peaks and valleys in in your time in master swimming. So for me, you know, I was feeling pretty crispy and burnt out, um, you know, towards the end of last year, and just needed a, you know, as, as as appealing as it was to go to you know Japan for world world master swimming, um, I really just felt the need to do something a little bit different and. Um, yeah, and give something new a crack. And so this is certainly a great, um, uh, you know, a great kind of outlet to do that. Um, and I've also found it surprisingly to to really help my um, my swimming. My um, my stroke efficiency has improved because I I seem to lengthen out more with the with the fins and snorkels. So I've been able to apply some of that from training for fin swimming and put that into practice um, when I'm not wearing fins um, much to my coach's astoundment because I'm <laughs> not an efficient swimmer um, so yeah it, I, you know the, it's it's fun um, and there there are benefits that you can then apply um, and I think it would be great if you know more masters clubs um, and March, masters coaches um, took an interest in it and and just explore how they might be able to get involved um, in the in the sport. Yeah, I mean, do you when you are training for that, you just include that in your normal training with the fins yeah. and the snorkel? Yeah. Yeah. So I basically did um, of the six sessions a week. I do I dedicate two of those sessions to um, working specifically with the fins. Um, the fins that I got um, earlier this year. And I must thank my friend Christina Eccles from North Sydney Masters, who um, has participated in the um, national um, championships with me at, on the Gold Coast. She sort of did a bit more research and went, oh, I think these fins could be really good. So she ordered them um, and I kind of tagged along for the ride. But they're a slightly longer and they're a thicker plastic. So um, they're a little harder on your feet. Um, I use a bit of chafing cream to kind of get them on. They're kind of like breaking in a new pair of shoes, you know. I've got little cuts around my ankles from where. where oh they've, no! <laughs> they've uh, yeah, they've they've done some damage. Um, but um, yeah, it's been um, yeah, it's it's been fun to sort of have two two sessions a week, um, just working with them, um, and and doing things that you you maybe forget to do, like understanding where your feet need to hit the wall when you're tumble turning, um, you know, counting your strokes coming out of a turn. Because like swimming, you can utilise that 15 metre mark um, for underwater. So, yeah, trying to be as efficient as you can um, coming off the wall and uh, and managing your breakouts and then 
mastering the art of diving in with the snorkel, which actually isn't too um, too difficult um, yeah. given the, the type of snorkel that, that is used. So, yeah. Is the breathing part in your mouth when you dive? Ah, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a centre centre snorkel, mm-hmm. um, and then just as you might use a um, you know a plastic snorkel um, in training, where the bracket sits on your forehead, um, it's that 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 is a metal bracket with a really thick um, um, you know a thick strap, um, and then. Um, and then the snorkel itself is a metal snorkel mm. and is quite narrow compared to the training snorkels. So, right. yeah, yeah. Do you find though when you dive in that it pushes back against your face or? Um, not, no, not really. No. I mean, you do need to sort of um, strap it down fairly firm, but um, no, no. I, I mean, I now use that snorkel in training because I find it to be more comfortable and sits um sits in place so you don't have the um you know the mouthpiece rolling around or twisting about when you're doing turns so yeah it's my preference to use that type of snorkel now yeah yeah and you mentioned in the bifin that you can do stroking or you can do it as a streamline so in your Mm. race in egypt was there people doing the streamline um no because they um i think the categories and again, this is where I'm still kind of new to it, so um, I'm not probably not articulating the categories properly. But um, you would enter um, a surface race or a bifins race. So right. the surface, the surface event, um, typically they t- tend to be more monofins than than flip than bifins. Um, but you can compete in the surface events using either apparatus. Whereas the bifins is it's bifins, it's freestyle. Um, you use your arms. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they chose you in the team from nationals, so you can't just enter it yourself like you do with masters pool um, swimming. Well, I think it's if you. Um, I think if you hit a certain qualifying time, um, you you are so, you are selected. Um, but so it. Um, so you. But you are. Yeah. You do. You are selected to represent your your federation so right. the Oz, Oz finning, uh, Ozfin Australian Masters team um, so it's by country rather than club um, and then yeah it's administered um, by the um, or Helen did Helen Lane did a huge amount of work um, kind of getting the getting the team together and um, managing managing our entries and all that all the logistics associated with it so yeah it's not a it's not a club based thing it's not like right. there's the fin swimming tasmania or fin swimming queensland or um you know or you know uq fin swimming club or anything like that um yeah so it was kind of nice to yeah tap on with a little platypus which was our Ozfin emblem, you know, and, yeah. and do the kind of country cap swaps and t-shirt swaps and all that sort of thing. So yeah, it was good fun. Really yeah, wow. Well, yeah, that's really great. I'm really interested to hear all about that. And I think a lot of people listening will be as well. So we'll maybe put a link to that website in the show notes yeah. and people can yeah. follow it, follow it that way. Absolutely. And certainly if anyone's got any um, inquiries about it, I'm more than happy to, if people want to reach out to me directly. And I know Helen Lane, um, as I said, you know, the president and, and head coach of Fin Swimming in Australia would be more than happy to, um, yeah, to answer any queries and, and would love to see the sport grow. Um, yes. So, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, fantastic. And hopefully now, you might come and try it in Adelaide yourself. Maybe. maybe and bring some maybe. friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm injured at the moment. I can probably do the kicking part of it. <laughs> exactly. And and as yeah. I said, like my, my elbows were still sort of very much in recovery mode. So I, uh, when I first gave it a go, so I just very tentatively, you know, put my arms through the water. And, um, yeah, so... Give it a crack. You'll be yes. Back. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> now, everyone that comes on the podcast, I always ask them the deep dive five questions, their favourite things, Ooh. a little bit snapshot of their swimming. Okay. So favourite pool that you've ever swum in? Ooh, favourite pool. Mm. Oh, well, I do love the valley. Um, it is an awesome pool. Though there is a great Olympic pool in Numea in New Caledonia, 
uh, that I saw him in a couple of times, and that is beautiful. So, yeah, I'd say I'd say that one. I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's where um, Michael Bowles' squad went recently. Oh, probably training yeah. camp before World Titles. Yeah, they went yeah. in, and it was a beautiful. It looked beautiful. The pool oh, there, it's stunning. Yeah. yeah, and then just walk along the ocean and wow. have a crepe and a cocktail. You know, nice. not to love. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And what's your favourite butterfly drill? Ooh, butterfly drill. Um, I like to sort of do my progression is kind of um, a 50 as four strokes, left arm, four strokes, right arm, three strokes, three, two, two, one, one, and then I'm done. And then going the, doing another 50 as um, four strokes, four strokes, two full strokes, three, three, two, 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 one, one, two. Um, and then, yeah, doing, you know, two left, two right, two both arms, and then your classic Beyondy, um, two left, two both arms, two both arms. What kind of language is that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, two arms at the same time, uh, and then two right arms. So I, like, I quite like that progression, yeah. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a good drill progression. I don't, I don't really know what else one can do in butterfly. Um, no, I think okay, there's lots of options. I just don't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> and how about your favourite freestyle training set? Oh, favourite freestyle training set. Mm. I do like our Saturday morning ritual, which is a bit of a, um, I don't know, it feels like a bit of a heart rate threshold -y sort of set that then gets into some sprint territory. So um you know we might do um mm, i don't know three two hundreds on a certain interval at, at six out of ten and then um you know four one fifties um with a you know a seven out of ten intensity uh then yeah five one hundreds or something like that um eight out of ten and then get down to some fifties and and twenty fives um with and you know the the number of you know 200s 100s or 50s that we do probably isn't right but um as in i'm not recalling them correctly but uh yeah the point is you reduce the distance you increase the intensity and you get more rest as the set goes along so i find that works well for me i tend to i feel like i need a while to sort of warm up so yeah um whereas yeah a lot of people are a bit cactus on i feel like i'm just starting to heat up and get some sizzle at the end of it so yeah <laughs> i like that i have been accused of being a save up tally but i'm not I'm just working hard to, <laughs> you to, just to you. get myself moving yeah warming up to get there yeah. exactly exactly yeah 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 i was um i was training uh, the other day and often we'll as a rev up we'll do sort of like 12 25s breathing four three or three two one zero at the yep. start of the session and i find that so hard but the other day yeah. we did it at the end and yep. i could do it oh man it's yeah. just like that warm-up just... i need that long warm-up yeah i'm the same i'm just like yeah. my lungs are nowhere near ready to work mm. it's like nope 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 so <laughs> i hear you <laughs> yeah <laughs> how about your favorite pre-race snack Ooh, pre-race snack um mm -hmm. I tend to eat light on my racing days. Um, yeah, so probably um, uh, for breakfast might be like eggs and veggies or something like that. Leftover stir fry is always a good good option. Um, yeah, it tends to be sort of a bit of, you know, eggs, veggies, rice, something like that. Um, and then, um, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm just laughing at some of the reactions that this might get. I've really got into fresh dates lately. So, um, you know, <laughs> that's a good hit of healthy hit of sugar and, uh, yeah. and things. So, yeah, no, I'm probably not, um, I probably don't have a great deal of wisdom in terms of nutrition. So, yeah. <laughs> no, that's um, good. No, I have, I have attempted a relay um, after having a, um, uh, oh, Sorry, there's a siren going on in the background. Um, uh, after having an espresso martini. So I don't <gasps> recommend doing that as a pre-race um, pre nutrition um, yeah, routine. 
<laughs> Point taken. Yeah, it's a bit, <laughs> your results might be a bit random. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and how about your favourite swimming memory? Ooh, favourite swimming memory. Certainly the, um, certainly the, the, the relay teams this year have been really special. Um, not just because of doing them, but I, I think also just understanding where everyone was at in their life, um, you know, heading into them and, and, and what it all meant for each of us and, um, and coming together as a team. Um, that was pretty good. Um, and then I guess from a personal results, I think, um, uh, <laughs> a not so good memory is the end of my hundred fly at Guangzhou in 2019. <laughs> that was pretty memorable. Um, <laughs> a lot. Um, yeah. And then maybe on a more positive note, um, yeah, the 50 fly in Guangzhou was the first time I'd um cracked 30 and snuck in for bronze not not expecting to to get that result so that was that was fun yeah that was great that was fun. but yeah um and then there's been memories of you know the types of conversations that you have at the pool and you know when you hear of someone you know um uh getting married or you know having a baby or being sick or yeah losing someone there they're those community moments that I think are really yeah, more priceless than the than, yes. than the results that you get. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think you've hit the nail on the head. That's what Master Swimming is all about, that community and mm. the sense of belonging to something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you think, God, why do these people put up with me every day? But uh. they do. So. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure they're happy to. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll get a flipper in the face if they don't. Though. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, that's right. <laughs> well, Jill, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's been lovely catching up with you and you hearing too, about Jill. your journey. That's been yeah. great. Thanks so much. And, um, yeah, uh, we, again, really encourage anyone who's even a little bit curious about fin swimming to um, – uh, yeah, to reach out, have a chat, and um, yeah, hopefully see some of you in Adelaide with your with your flippers on at the Australian Masters Games. Yeah, fantastic. We'll see if we can get some of them there. Fingers crossed. Brilliant. Okay. Take right. care. Thanks, Daniel. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.